7th grade open up resources, illustrative mathematics. Unit 5, Lesson 11, Dividing Rational Numbers. Problem number one, find the quotients. For this first one, we have a positive divided by a negative. So we know the answer is going to be a negative. 24 divided by negative 6 equals negative 4. The next one is a negative divided by a positive. So this quotient will also be a negative. Negative 15 divided by 3 tenths equals negative 50. Next, we have a negative divided by a negative, so we know that the quotient is going to be a positive. Negative 4 divided by negative 20 is going to be a positive 1 fifth, which is also equivalent to positive 2 tenths. Problem number 2. Find the quotients. A. 2 fifths divided by 3 fourths. We can change this to a multiplication problem by multiplying 2 fifths by the reciprocal of 3 fourths. So now we have 2 fifths times 4 thirds, which equals 18 fifteenths. B. 9 fourths divided by negative 3 fourths. This is a positive divided by a negative. That means the quotient will be negative. And we can change this to a multiplication problem by multiplying 9 fourths times the reciprocal of negative 3 fourths. Now it reads 9 fourths times 4 over negative 3. We could simplify this by cross canceling. On the left side, 4 goes into 4 once, and on the right side, 4 goes into 4 once. 3 goes into 9 3 times, and 3 goes into negative 3 negative 1 time. Multiply across the top, 3 times 1 is 3. Multiply across the bottom, you have 1 times negative 1, which is negative 1. And 3 over negative 1, or 3 divided by negative 1, is negative 3. C. This is a negative divided by a negative, so the quotient's going to be positive. We can change this to a multiplication problem by multiplying negative 5 sevenths by the reciprocal of negative 1 third which is 3 over negative 1. Negative 5 times 3 is negative 15 over 7 times negative 1. That's negative 7. Negative divided by a negative is a positive, so the quotient is 15 over 7. D. This is a negative divided by a positive, so the quotient's going to be a negative. We can change this to a multiplication problem by multiplying by the reciprocal of 1 sixth. That would be 6 over 1. We can do some cross canceling. 3 goes into 3 once, and 3 goes into 6 twice. Now we have negative 5 times 2 over 1 times 1. That would be negative 10 over 1, which is equivalent to negative 10 divided by 1, which is equal to negative 10. Problem number three, is the solution positive or negative? A, two times what number equals positive six? Since a positive times a positive equals a positive, then x must be positive. B, a negative times what number equals a positive? Since a negative times a negative equals a positive, then x must be negative. C. A positive times what number equals a negative? Since a positive times a negative equals a negative, then x must be negative. D. A negative times what number equals a negative? Since a negative times a positive equals a negative, then x must be positive. Problem number four. Find the solution mentally. A. Three times negative four equals a. Since a positive times a negative equals a negative, and 3 times 4 is 12, then A must equal negative 12. B. B times negative 3 equals negative 12. Since a positive times a negative equals a negative, and 4 times 3 is 12, then B must be positive 4. I can also work this problem backwards and divide. Negative 12 divided by negative 3 equals positive 4. So B equals positive 4. C. Negative 12 times what number equals positive 12? Since a negative times a negative equals a positive, and 12 times 1 is 12, then the value for C must be negative 1. D. 
D. D times 24 equals negative 12. Well, we know that a negative times a positive equals a negative, so D must be negative, and half of 24 is 12. So negative 1 half times positive 24 equals negative 12. D equals negative 1 half. Problem number 5 from 7th grade unit 4 lesson 2. In order to make a specific shade of green paint, a painter mixes one and a half quarts of blue paint, two cups of green paint, and a half gallon of white paint. How much of each color is needed to make 100 cups of this shade of green? The secret to answering this question is make all the units of measure cups. The painter originally started with one and a half quarts of blue paint. That's equal to six cups. That means that he started with six cups of blue paint. The information provided also tells us that the painter started with two cups of green paint. Since there are 16 cups in one gallon, that means that there's eight cups and a half a gallon. That means that the painter started with eight cups of white paint. Let's add up all these cups of paint. Six cups of blue paint plus two cups of green paint plus eight cups of white paint equals 16 cups total for his first batch. To make a batch of 100 cups of paint, multiply each color amount by six and a quarter. Because 100 is six and a quarter times greater than 16. Originally, he had 16 cups now he's going to make a batch with 100 cups. In his first batch, the painter started with six cups of blue paint. We need to multiply those six cups by 6.25. That means for the batch of 100 cups of paint, the painter's going to need 37.5 cups of blue paint. In the painter's first batch, he started with two cups of green paint. To make a batch of 100 cups, we need to multiply two cups of green paint times 6.25. That means the painter will need 12.5 cups of green paint or 12 and a half cups of green paint to make a batch of 100 cups. And finally, that brings us to the amount of white paint. He started with his original batch with eight cups of white paint. Now we need to multiply eight cups of white paint times 6.25 so that he can make a batch with 100 cups of paint. Since 8 times 6.25 equals 50, the painter will need 50 cups of white paint to make the batch of 100 cups of paint. For the painter to make 100 cups of this shade of green paint, the painter will need 37 and a half cups of blue paint, 12 and a half cups of green paint, and 50 cups of white paint. Add up all these cups and you can see that it equals the 100 cups that make up this shade of green paint. Problem number six from seventh grade, unit five, lesson three. Here is a list of the highest and lowest elevation on each continent. A, which continent has the largest difference in elevation? And which continent has the smallest difference in each elevation? Asia has the largest difference in elevation with a difference of 9,275 meters because 8,848 minus negative 427 is the same as 8,848 and the opposite of negative 427. And the opposite of negative 427 is positive. So 8,848 plus 427. That equals a difference of 9,275. Europe has the smallest difference in elevation because 4,810 minus a negative 28 is the same as 4,810 and the opposite of negative 28. And the opposite of negative 28 is positive 28. So 4,810 plus 28 equals a difference of 4,838. B. Make a display dot plot, box plot, or histogram of the data set and explain why you chose that type of display to represent this data set. Take a close look at the right hand column of the table. All seven continents have a negative as their lowest point. We can easily represent that on a histogram or graph like this. 
The vertical axis represents the number of continents and the horizontal axis represents the highest and lowest point in meters. The red column on this graph represents all seven continents. The lowest points of all the continents fall between zero and negative 2,000 meters on this histogram. Now let's take a look at Asia's highest point. Its elevation is much higher than all of the others, so it can have its own place on the chart. On the histogram, it looks like this in orange. It's one unit high, which represents one continent, and that means that one continent has a high elevation of between 8,000 and 10,000 meters. Looking back at the table, you notice that North America and South America have very similar highest points in meters. On the histogram, we can go two units vertically. That represents two continents. On the horizontal line, it ranges from 6,000 meters to 8,000 meters in elevation. The highest elevation of these four continents are very close, so they'll be represented together in one column on the histogram like this. This column reaches a height of four units vertically, that represents four continents, and horizontally it ranges from 4,000 to 6,000. That means that four of the continents have a highest elevation that falls between 4,000 and 6,000 meters. Be sure to support my YouTube channel by liking this video, leaving a comment, and subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.